Can y'all hear me? Yes. All right. Bow your hands. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for last night's sleep, God, and this morning, Lord God. We thank you for the sin of brightness of a new day. We thank you because you are a good God and you're willing to be praised. Bless all the saints that's out on tonight, Lord God, that we are doing something we've never done before. But we say thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you because even during this pandemic, Lord God, you still able for us to be together, Lord God. And we say thank you right now. We say all things, give thanks. This is the will concerning you, Lord God. Continue blessing our pastor and first lady. Bless all our ministers, our geekers, our preachers, our missionaries, our musicians, Lord God. Everybody that have a part in the household of faith, Lord God. Continue blessing my family, Lord God. Families all over the land and country, Lord God. We thank you right now. We give you by your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, sir, I am. Um, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are so glad, uh, as we said, again, as, as the song has already been sung, so glad we are here in Jesus' name. Amen. It is truly a blessing to see so many of you um, on this virtual service. Uh, and whether you are watching us via this Zoom or whether you are watching us through Facebook Live right now, this is a first for the Smyrna Church. Amen. This is the first time we have held a completely virtual, um, completely virtual uh, watch night service uh, at Smyrna Church. Certainly it is a new thing, praise God, but we are thankful to God that he has allowed us to be able to assemble in the virtual world. Amen. We praise God for that. So at this time, we're going to move forward into our service. We know that, um, that, that God has been good to everyone. Amen. And we um, are going to give you an opportunity to sing your song, uh, to give your testimony, praise God, about the goodness of God in your life. Just as a reminder, um, if you're new to using Zoom, uh, first and foremost, uh, if, if, if you can, we would absolutely love to see your beautiful faces. Um, amen. And, uh, so if you want to, uh, engage your camera, uh, then please make sure to go down to the bottom left of your screen of the zoom screen. Uh, and you can, uh, enable your camera, your video to come on. If you just press that stop, it'll say stop video, but you can just press that button and it'll have your camera come on. And the same thing for your microphone as you're wanting to sing a song or to give your testimony, then you can certainly hit that button. If your microphone is red right now, or has a red line through it, you can hit that, enable your microphone so everybody can hear you, okay? Uh, and once you are done talking or singing, then if you will just hit that button and mute yourself again uh, so that we don't get a lot of feedback and everything. And to those of you who might be watching uh, through Facebook Live, we welcome you to our first ever Smyrna Church of Christ of the Apostolic Faith virtual watch night service. Amen. Amen. So we praise God. Let's give God a hand praise just for allowing us to be able to have a virtual watch night service. Thank God for our pastor allowing us to do this and to give God praise just through the virtual world. Amen. So at this time, we're going to open the floor for you, amen, to give praise to God through your song or through your testimony in Jesus' name. Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful time. 
Jesus. Jesus. So holy, make you mad. Your life, you know, you only be the sun to the end of sin. Amen. Will there be another witness or another song from someone? Someone have another testimony or a song you'd like to sing? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I just Lord. think it's praise the Lord. If there was a song I would sing, is God has been good to me. He's been very, very good to me. More than this whole world could ever be, God has been good to me. When I think about how far that the Lord has brought me through 2020, all I can do is just jump and shout and just thank the Lord. I feel confined sitting at this desk, but I have to give the Lord a praise for how he has kept me. Hallelujah. Um, 2020 hasn't been what I expected it to be, but the Lord has done more than I ever expected. Hallelujah. When I thought I wouldn't have a job, that the Lord supplied my need, he gave me more that I thought I would have, was able to pay off some bills, even though it was laid off for a while. I thank and praise the Lord for that. Even how he kept my body healed in the name of Jesus, how he kept my family. No, it hasn't been great, but Lord God, I thank you because it could be much worse. And I just praise the Lord for where I am right now. And I'm just expecting more. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm believing God for more. I'm believing God for the testimonies that we will share. I'm just excited about what the Lord did in 2020. And I said, Lord, if we made it through 2020, sure we can make it through 2021. And I'm asking that you continue to pray for my family, that the Lord will continue to use us, that he will save us and keep us and let us be an example. I ask that you... Let's get excited. We might be virtual, but God knows I feel like jumping up, giving him a praise because of what he has done. And I'm excited about what he's going to do. Continue to remember me and my family in your prayer in Jesus' name. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Amen. That's my song of worship. That's my testimony. 
testimony truly when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God. I bless God just for saving and keeping me. Giving on to our pastor, Bishop Fowler, First Lady Fowler, Mother Grace, my husband, Deacon Turner, all of the saints, all the elders, the ministers. We thank and praise God for this day. Thank and praise God for blessing us to live to see the last day of the year. When we came into this year, we did not know whether or not we would see it, but to God be the glory. We thank and praise God for how he has blessed our family circle, how he's kept us through dangers seen and unseen, how he's been a, a, a protector, how he's been a keeper, how he's been a lawyer, how he's been a doctor, how he's been a way maker. I just thank and praise God because he is my everything. You know, I praise God just for this time and this season that we're in. I praise God because, you know, uh, I've always told different ones, how can you tell someone that the Lord is a healer if you've never been sick? How can you tell someone he's a way maker if you've never needed a way made? How can you tell someone that he's a lawyer if you've never needed a lawyer in the courtroom? I can stand today and say God has been my everything. I do thank and praise God for this time. I praise him for this season. I ask you, oh God, just to continue to keep us in your care, that we may run on and be the children that you're mm -hmm. calling for. And when our time is up on this side, that we can hear you say, well done. Continue to pray, pray much for me and my family in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Will there be, we thank God for those that are uh, continuing to come on. Amen. We've um, got several folks who are, are still uh, trying to get in and things. So we thank God for that. Um, and we pray that those of you who are watching us via Facebook live, uh, we pray that, uh, that God will bless you even through this service, a very unique service for us. Uh, but nonetheless, we are together in Jesus' name, just to lift up the holy and righteous name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, I've said this off, often before when we've been, uh, when we were in the sanctuary, nobody has said anything for me. So I just want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank God for allowing me to be uh, just in another watch meeting service, though virtual. I praise God for allowing me to be a part of, uh, of this service on tonight. I thank God for keeping me and my family throughout 2020. Uh, it is truly the goodness of the Lord and no goodness of my own uh, that I sit here before you all on tonight. Uh, for many of you, some of you, most of you probably know, and some of you may not, uh, that back in September, uh, September the 22nd, as a matter of fact, uh, I was in a motorcycle accident where I was hit Amen. And, uh, you know, never have I been through, I've been in car accidents before, but never in a motorcycle accident. Uh, but I thank God for his keeping power. I thank God for how he kept me, how he has sustained me, how he continues to heal my body. Amen. Because there are so many people that are in the cemetery right now for less than that. So I would be stupid if I didn't give God praise on this last year of 2020 for sparing my life, for allowing me to be in the land of the living and not mingle with those that are dead. Praise the name of our God. You know, I find it, I, 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 I count it a privilege and an honor just to be able to lift up my hands and say, God, I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to be here at, at this time, this close, an hour and 10 minutes away from another new year. And I just give God praise and honor for that. I certainly thank God for, again, for Sister Miller, for my children, uh, John Carlos and Jaquin. Uh, they are on here somewhere or we're on here. Uh, they're on here. But I thank God for them. I thank God for the Miller family. I thank God for my mom, uh, 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 who is also on this, uh, on this service as well. I praise God for how he's continuing to keep her. Praise God. I just praise God for just being able to see the saints tonight. Amen. Though virtual, y'all looking good. Amen. And I just praise God for you. Uh, I praise God for this platform. Amen. And so I just give God praise for that in Jesus name. God, pray much for me that 2021 will be an even better year for the people of God. Hey, Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Okay, can, can y'all hear me? Yeah. All right, so it's kind of new to me. Uh, um, I'm done with the one with the audio, but not the, uh, I guess, the virtual. But truly, uh, I had to get the assets down with that if I get on the well. But in any case, I'm here now, and I thank God uh, just for being able to be here. Um, it is a little different, but uh, nonetheless, I still feel a connection, just being able to hear the saints. And, um, God truly is a good God. Amen. I thank him for his mercy, for his kindness. And like many of you, uh, yes, 2020 has really been a challenge. Amen. But uh, here we are down to the last hour or so. And thank God I made it. Amen. You as well. Amen. God has truly been good. Uh, you know, I was thinking about it today, or I might have heard it somewhere, when it said Jesus is the reason for the season. But the more you think about it, I thought about something else. You are the reason for the season. You are the reason why Jesus came. Had it not been for you, he would have had no reason to even come. So when you think about it, you are the reason for the season. Jesus came, laid his life down for you and for me. And because of that, we have a right to the tree of life. Amen. I am grateful. I uh, thank God for things where they are. Uh, my pastor, he's still with us. Amen. He had a little rough time there for a little bit, but it wasn't ever the challenge of the devil. But truly, he, he blessed and he made it through, as well as many of us. And we're looking forward to a good year, a blessed year. Amen. We don't know the future holds, but I'm so glad to know that the God that I serve holds the future. Amen. There's a lot of things that have happened in my family uh, with my children, stepchildren, and all. Uh, different things that happened could have really been uglier than what it was. Amen. But uh, God spared us and blessed us and things as well as they are. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sometimes I think about, uh, you know, living for the Lord. It is a challenge. But it's a good challenge. It's a challenge that's worth. My thing is, if ain't nothing going on with you, you might be doing something wrong. The devil ain't fighting you. Amen. So when he's fighting you, he's trying you. Amen. You must be doing something right. <laughs> Whatever that is, he, he's trying to stop you. But keep on doing what you do, serving God. And I thank God for just being <coughs> in your space. And y'all be blessed. And I'm going to be right here to the end, listening to what everybody has to say in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 While some folks are getting their testimonies together, we're going to uh, sing this song. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Oh, you carry my burdens every day. I know you're such a wonderful Savior. I love you more each day. Oh, Jesus, you brought me all the way. I said, Jesus, you brought me all the way. I know you carry my burdens every day. I know you're such a wonderful Savior. I love you more each day. Oh, Jesus, you brought me all the way. Come on, y'all, put your hands together. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Oh, you carry my burdens every day. I know you're such a wonderful Savior. I love you more each day. Oh, Jesus, you brought me all the way. Amen. Amen. 
Will there be another witness? Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, God is a good God. Yes, He is. I thank God is a good God. Yes, He is. I thank God is a good God. Oh, yes, He is. He's a real, real good God. Yes, He is. He's a real, real good God. Yes, He is. I know God is a good God. Yes, He is. I know God is a good God. Yes, he is. Oh, yes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Sister Deborah, look like you're trying to say something, but we can't hear you. She's muted. Okay. She
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for uh, the devotion uh, and all the songs, the testimonies that have gone forth on tonight. Amen. Uh, will there be another witness for the Lord on tonight? Any other songs that you would like to sing? We don't want to cut anybody off. We want to make sure that we have heard from those that, that want to be heard on tonight, that have a testimony. Amen. I first want to give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to first to first play to Pastor Bishop Fowler, to Minister Miller, to everyone who is actually on the um the Zoom tonight. Whew, this has been a year. Um oh, Lord. Whew, whew, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank God for just allowing me to be here one more time. Amen. Just, just, just excuse me because this is actually the, the first time that I've given this testimony right. since I've um right. since I've been home. But um when I when I went to the hospital to have to have my actual I can't even remember what I heard. <laughs> but then I came home and I was home for a week. And I, um, I went back to work, and that weekend, that, that following Thursday, I think it was, um, I was talking to my daughter, and I went to work that Friday, and by that weekend, I spent that Saturday with her, and this was after my hernia surgery. And I spent that following Saturday with her, and she said, Mama, she said, you know, she said, you're not acting the same. She said, you know, I was, I was asking her questions over and over and she said I wasn't talking much and um and that was that Saturday and that Sunday I stayed home because I had I had just had the hernia surgery and um so I stayed home that Sunday and that Monday I went back to work but what I didn't know was I went back to work that Monday but my daughter actually took that Monday off she was calling doctors trying to figure out who could see me because she knew something had happened, and I had no idea. And um, so I, I went to work, and I took one of my friends. So I left work, and I was going to go back to work because I took one of my friends to the doctor, and she called me, and she said, Mom, she said, where are you? And I said, well, I just left the doctor's office. I said, I'm on my way back to back to Reasonable. And, um, and I said, then I'm going to go back to work. She said, well, when you get back to Reasonable, she she said, let me know. She said, because I'm going to come and get you because I've made you a doctor's appointment. I was like, and I said, well, where's the doctor's appointment at? And she said, it's in Greensboro. I said, well, I'm in Greensboro now. And she said, well, meet me at this doctor. And so I said, okay. So I went to that doctor. And when I, when I went to that doctor, you know, he did the test. And he was asking me questions and stuff. And he said, well, we need to get you um, to go to another. It was somewhere close and I, I said well I can just go back to Reasonable I'll go back to my my regular doctor and I came all the way back to Reasonable and I went to my doctor and my doctor um, couldn't see me until two days later and Jasmine was like no she said you go and park your car and she said we're going to go to the hospital mm -hmm. and Lord have mercy so I said well there's nothing wrong with me and she was like mama she said no she said we're going to go so I parked my car at home and we went to the emergency room and I was there all the rest of that day. And I think they finally saw me. It was like a little bit after 11 that night. And when I went back and they did everything they had to do, they told Jasmine, they said, your mama had a stroke. And I looked at the doctor and I said, what? I said, I had a what? And the, the, the doctor said, you had a stroke. And I said, are you sure? <laughs> I mean, I was perfectly fine. And, um, and he said, well, I have to admit you. And I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. You know, and in my mind, I'm saying, there is no way I had a stroke. My Lord. And so um, I'm thinking it was, I've, I've been perfectly fine. I've been healthy. I've been, you know, exercising, doing everything that, I had, that I'm supposed to be doing that I think of anyway. And to hear that you've had a stroke, it was, um, it was one of the, one of the probably, 
toughest things that I think I've ever had to hear um, or ever had to um, go through. And so I was in the hospital that whole week. That whole week, they ran tests, they did everything. They they said, well, you're fine. You know, this is good, this is good. I mean, all the tests they ran, and I said, well, you know, what, how did I have a stroke? What caused the stroke? We're, we're still looking at that. I still don't know how or, you know, why or, but um, but I just, I just want to give God all the honor, all the, just everything, just for allowing me to still be here, to be in the land of the living, to, Amen. to Amen. still be able to have Amen. all the activities of my limbs. You know, I've, I've heard of people having strokes and, you know, some people couldn't walk, some people couldn't right. talk, some people just, just certain things that they couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I suffered was a short loss of memory. Some, some things I still can't remember. Um, and some things, you know, I might have to ask, you know, a second time. I mean, but to Lord, if, if that's all that that I lost, you know, I am so grateful. I am eternally um, grateful. Um, thank and you, I, Jesus. I just every day I look at life. Thank you, Jesus. Totally new. I look at life every day that I wake up. You know, I was already saying, Lord, I thank you, but every day that I wake up is a brand new day that God has allowed me to be here. And I don't take that, I don't take that for granted. I I don't take that for granted. And I just want to say everyone that, that knows the, the words of prayer, please continue to pray for me. Um, continue to just lift me up, continue to whatever you have to do, just call my name out in prayer. Um, just thank you. And I'm I'm just I'm excited. I'm excited for what the new year has to offer me. I'm excited for just, just being in the land of the living. Just, we got about shortly under almost 50 minutes now. And I'm just, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Amen. And, and we can hear your excitement, sister. We hear your excitement. And we thank God for your excitement because it should have been the other way, but God. And we thank God for uh, for him keeping you and taking you through your test uh, through this year um, and, and bringing you out uh, on this side to be able to give that testimony about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Will there be another witness uh, from anybody? I see some more, some more folks are joining. Uh, will there be another witness or another song? Before we begin, before we begin with our, our, our speaker. <clears throat> There's a storm cloud on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If you're so not angry, Jesus, he will surely drift away. Oh, there's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, Lord. Drift away, Lord. You will surely drift away. If your soul's not Take in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Amen. 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 Just wanted to give a little bit, uh, just a few more seconds, if you will, for... Um, any other testimonies? It's about 11, 12 now. And so we'll have our uh, our first speaker, which is uh, Elder Robertson. Amen. And um, he will speak, amen, um, uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes. Amen. And um, then if someone in between that time, uh, after he speaks, has a testimony or another song, then we'll have a few more songs and testimonies. Amen. And then after that, 
um, then I will speak after Elder Robertson, uh, and then our uh, pastor, Bishop Fowler, will, uh, will close us out. Amen. In Jesus' name, as, as we be prepared to, to bring in the new year. Uh, so um, any, other, any other songs or testimony before we turn it over to Elder Robertson to bring our first uh, message for tonight? All right, Elder. Uh, Elder Robinson, then we will turn it uh, turn it over to you. Um, and as a reminder, everyone, if by chance, um, if by chance uh, your link goes out or whatnot, or you get kicked off by accident or something like that, just go back to the link that you got in your email from me and click back on the link for this service, and you'll be able to get right back in. Okay. Just, uh, just remember that. I meant to say that at the beginning, uh, but um, just do that if by chance you get cut off. All right? Uh, so, Elder Robinson. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, um, we want to just talk just a little bit <clears throat> with the what time we have. And uh, I just want to focus your attention on the um, on the woman with the uh, issue of blood. And I just want to just, just touch a little bit on that. Uh, yeah, I think about the woman with the issue of blood. You know, one of the things about that story that, that comes to mind the most is the simple fact that this woman tried Jesus for two reasons. One in particular is because uh, she heard about him. And uh, that right there by itself caused her to, to try him. The other reason she tried him, um, um, because she almost turned up to have another choice at the end. But what I noticed is that when she had something, when she had money, she, she knew people. She had things going her way. She tried that first. And I noticed that a lot of people in life, especially well-to-do people, people who got money, uh, got power, they, you know, they got things going for them. They usually won't try the Lord because they put their trust in what they have. They, uh, they feel like what they have will help them make it in this world. Now, I don't want to make you think that saving money and having things won't help you. It will. You know, having a decent car is better than having a racket car. You know, having a home to live in is better than living on the street. Uh, things will make you happy, will make you better in one way or another. But there are some things in life that you absolutely need the Lord. <laughs> There are some things that's out of our control that's beyond what we can do. If you get sick, yes, you can go to the doctor, and many times we do, but there are times that a doctor will tell you, it ain't nothing we can do. That's right. And when a doctor tells you that, then the question is, what are you going to do? You know, does that mean it's over when the doctor says, we have done all we can do? Does that mean that's the end? No, really, what that means at that point is it's time for you to exercise your faith. And you can say you have faith all you want My Lord. until the gun is pointed at you. Amen. If you look it down the barrel and you and you see the person's finger is shaking on the trigger, it's a whole other ball game there. My Lord. Amen. You can act tough and be tough, but at that point, the real you is going to show up. And if you got any faith at all, now I'm not asking you to be foolish, but you really got to trust God at that point right. in some situations. So the lady with the issue of blood, she had money. And how do I know that? Because the Bible says she spent all she had. So that means what she had, she is not spending. She went from doctor to doctor. And trying to, first of all, find out what the problem is, 
and also hoping that the situation could get better. And the Bible says that after she did all this, not only did her situation not get better or even was solved at all, but it got worse. My Lord. And so in a situation like that, a lot of times we try to fix the situation ourselves. And in the end, we end up making the situation worse. Mm -hmm. There are sometimes, not all the time, but there are sometimes that we just got to take our hands off. Amen. There are sometimes we just got to put it all in God's head. We just got to trust him on some things. Now, you can try a few things if you want to, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you can see what you're doing ain't working, hey, it's time to reach out to the Lord. And you got to have faith and trust God because God can do all things. So this woman, she was going through the Bible says for many years, 12 long years, I believe, and she was suffering this thing, and she was in a position where she couldn't be around her family. Amen. She was looked down upon. Uh, people no doubt talked about her. And, and it really had been a rough life, especially even back then. Uh, you can't be around your family. You can't go to church. Uh, if somebody see you, they cross the road. They're trying to get away from you. You know, you just look down upon them like you're not even a human. And this had to be a miserable life. And, and she had to go through this for many years and wonder what can she do. And, and she tried everything. Money don't have no value to you when you're sick. When you're going through something, your money don't mean nothing. I think I heard something somewhere the other day, I believe. Uh, it may have been some old, uh, internet or something. It said something about people spending their whole life where people would lose their health trying to get well. And then in the end, I think it would have said, is they would lose their wealth trying to get help. So you see what I'm saying? People would lose everything they got trying to get money. And then in the end, when they get old, and then they got all this money and get sick, then they spend every dime trying to get well. You see what I'm saying? So the thing about it is just learn to enjoy what you have, make do with it. You know, it's an old saying, some people, for some reason, love think that if you're poor or that if you don't have much, then you ought to be, you know, you ought to be just dirty and nasty. Like I've seen some people got dirty cars or dirty places, and, and I'm like, you know, they're like, well, I ain't got the money you got, I ain't got the job you got. What? Well, you ain't got to have a, you know, your place might be clean, you don't have to have a good job that clean place. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, your car looking decent, you know what I'm saying? That, it don't cost a lot for that. Uh, we had a car wash and leave, it cost 50 cents for years. I think it just went up to a dollar. One dollar. You know, and so the thing about it is, you don't have to feel like you're less than somebody else. This lady was going through and spent everything she had trying to get better. And in the end, the situation was going worse. But then, at some point, when she heard about Jesus, and you know the story. I don't know what all the women heard. No doubt she heard how Jesus was opening up blinded eyes. And I guess she was wondering, man, how did he do that? And then she heard how Jesus' name was casting out devils, people that were possessed. It looked like normal back then for people to be possessed. I mean, when we hear about somebody being possessed now, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of like cat food. It's kind of hard to believe it. Or maybe we get other names and stuff now. But back then, it was normal for people to be possessed. It just go through, foaming at the mouth, and having all kinds of problems. That was like a, a normal thing that went on. But when Jesus came on the scene, he just walked up to him and called a demon name out. They can leave. And the person was being made whole. And this woman heard about this. And she was thinking, this person that was just all their life going through and cutting themselves and cutting themselves and smacking their heads against the wall and stuff. And Jesus just healed them and they sat up. And all this was building up her character, building up her faith. And, and, and that's what life is all about. When we, we come to church, like right now we can't come because of the situation, but when we hear the testimonies that God made a way, I thank her about uh, Sister Randolph to get a testimony of what she went through, but how she kept her hands in God's hands. When you hear these stories, they ought to encourage you that, hey, God did it for them. He has no respect to put them. Amen. I mean, Amen. he can do it for you. And so this lady kept hearing about these stories about the Lord. And no doubt when she heard about how that he had raised up the dead, I mean, you know, that was like, whoa. I mean, that just didn't happen. I mean, raising up the dead? Amen. 
And you know the thing about Jesus raising from the dead, just on that point of the subject right there, you know, you know, they said Jesus when he when he rose again, that you know, he was the first. And then everybody else was like, well, you know, he goes with the other people folks too. The only difference between those other folks and Jesus was they rose up to live a human or uh, natural life again. Jesus rose up spiritually. He had a body that the kind of body we don't have one day when it's all over. He was able to walk through walls and stuff like that. Like Lazarus, he ain't Lazarus. Lazarus didn't walk through the walls. He was still the same Lazarus he used to be. So Jesus was the first that rose that like that. But nevertheless, you hear about people who were dead and he was able to go in the tomb and bring them out and they would live again. She heard these stories. She's like, hey, all these doctors I've been going to, they've been trying all kind of tricks. They probably ain't upset with these students they're telling her to do. They probably using hot rocks and probably telling her to walk so many miles a day and probably giving her all kind of stuff to drink. And I mean, I could just imagine what they were doing for her. They probably had a man, you know, somewhere, man, standing out in the cold, freezing or something. Maybe that would help through it. Sitting in ice or maybe, you know, just being out in the sun. Oh, it's just so terrible what they were trying to tell her to do. They were just collecting money from her. That's all they were doing. They were just trying stuff and getting the money. Now, the thing about it is, how you gonna charge me here? You fix my problem. But nevertheless, that's what was going on. And we see here that the woman was going through, and she was having that problem. I see my screen kind of blink off. I don't know about y'all still hear me, can you? I'm assuming you can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in any case, the woman, she still, at that point, you know, they were kind of, they were making her kind of all kind of tricks, doing all kind of stuff to get better. But her situation wasn't getting any better. She was only getting worse. And she kept hearing these stories about Jesus. She kept hearing how different he was. He wasn't like the Pharisees. The Pharisees was lifted up with pride, you know, and they was all about, you know, condemning you and making you feel less than they were. They had these fancy robes on and was clean and looking good. And everybody else was like a nobody almost to them. But this Jesus was different than that. He was he was talking man about, you know, loving sons and you know, and getting tax collectors and, and you know, and, and it's like how's he gonna handle those kind of people? Because he loved those people, because he came to save those kind of people. He didn't come to save the world, he came to save the sick. Those that were going through, those that were lost, those were the ones that needed him. And she heard about all this. And when she heard all this stuff about what Jesus was doing, it dipped her faith up. And she said to herself, truly, 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 if a man can do all this, surely he can fix my problem. Even though it's big and can't no doctor help me. Even though this situation ain't getting no better. And I'm suffering day in and day out. I believe that he can do it. So when she started, when she made herself believe that he can do it, the next step was reaching out to him. You see, faith without works is dead. It don't do you no good to believe that God can do something and then not react to what God can do. So because she believed, the Bible says she got in the prayer. She went out to find him. And when she heard no doubt where he was at, where he was going to be, she started reaching out to get him. Now remember, she can't be in public. She can't be around people because if they see her, you know, they can actually man, have her thrown, you know, go down to jail or stone for anything because she can condemn somebody else. It can be a problem. They, they was real hard on people that, that you know, he, if you had blood coming out your body any kind of way, if you got cut, you stretch your foot, anything, and blood would come out, they, they just they had a big thing about blood getting on other people. And so, therefore, she had this problem on a regular basis. It didn't have to be a cut or nothing. It was just every day she just had this problem. So because of that, she couldn't be around people. And knowing that she couldn't be around people, she had to, in a sense, sneak to get to Jesus. She couldn't go to him openly. She had to do it without people recognizing who she was. That's why she kind of got in the trap and she, no doubt, she probably had it like really over her head and she was kind of looking down. And then on top of all that, when she finally found him to get to him, she was so low and below everybody else. That's why she was down in the seat that his army was. And she wasn't up at the top where his shoulders were, it was almost, she was down at the garment because she was that low. She was that far down, and she was getting in the press, going through the crowd to reach out to get him. And then on top of all that, she, she decided that this man, Jesus, has so much power in him that I believe that I don't even have to ask him to heal me if I can just touch him. Don't even ask him to just touch him. I believe I can be healed. Now, a lot of people at that time didn't have that kind of faith. They didn't believe, they, they didn't believe that Jesus could do a lot of stuff, but they didn't believe that they could just touch him and be healed. But she believed that I could do it and nobody even knows. She thought she could do it, Jesus not even know it. I'm going to just get healed and nobody would know it. 
because she had the faith to believe and God healed her. So in my clothes, I say to you that you got to know, number one, God can do it. Once you know he can do it and you have the faith, then you got to put it to work. You got to reach out to him. And when you reach out to him, no matter what nobody say, no matter how shame it is, no matter what the situation is, you got to get in the past, you got to go to him and let God do what needs to be done. So saints, my sisters and brothers, I say to you, whatever your property is, whatever you're going through, whatever you need, trust the Lord and don't let nobody talk you out of it. Nobody your job, nobody your family, but get in the prayer and reach out to the Lord and let him heal you, bless you, and open doors for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless you, Ella. Bless you, Ella. Amen. Certainly enjoy that. Enjoy that message. And knowing about what God can do for his people, for those, if you just simply believe in what his word says. Amen. Um, certainly we want to uh, give space. If anyone has a song at this time, we'll... Um, uh, have our next uh, our next um, message, if you will, at um, in about three minutes. So I want to give you an opportunity. If you have not sung your song or if you have not given your testimony, have something to say, then by all means, please feel free at this time. Um, As an educator, you always learn uh, that um, you want to provide sufficient wait time. All right. So you want to give people the opportunity to think about, do I want to do this? Do I not? Do I want? Well, I think I'll do it. Uh, no, never mind. I won't do it. All right. So anyway, we don't want anybody to feel like they didn't have the opportunity to say anything. <clears throat> um, uh, so um, I will... Uh, be uh, bringing forth a, uh, just a quick word tonight, just hopefully just a word of encouragement, a word of admonishment on tonight. Uh, and afterwards, then our pastor, uh, Bishop Fowler, uh, will have uh, the last words and will uh, will also um, uh, lead us to the prayer as we go into the new year. We're about 30 minutes away, y'all. We're about 30 minutes away from a brand new year. Amen. 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 So um, if you will, please, uh, you should have your Bibles. Amen. Because even though we are virtual, uh, the word of God, y'all yeah, hold your Bibles up. Hold your Bibles up. If you got your Bible, hold your Bibles up. All right. All right. I see some cell phone Bibles. I see some, okay. I see some regular Bibles as well. Amen. So we praise God for the word of God. Amen. Amen. If you will turn your Bibles with me to uh, the book of Matthew, St. Matthew, <clears throat> the uh, 24th chapter. St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Amen. And we will start uh, just a few, we'll read just a few scriptures uh, uh, starting at verse three, starting at verse three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. <clears throat> See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And last verse, verse 8, all these are the beginning of, of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So I just want to, to, to use just as a, a quick subject uh, from these few verses of Matthew 24. I can see clearly now 
I can see clearly now. And, you know, this year, you know, when we first, last year this time, I recall being in the watch meeting service there at Smyrna. And I remember uh, preaching a message that said, get ready for the turn up. Little did I know that the turn up would be what we have seen throughout this year. Amen. Um, the way that God would turn up in our lives, the way that God would provide for us, even in the midst of businesses closing down and people losing their jobs, the way that God would turn up in our lives and keep us healthy in the midst of a pandemic. Amen. Little did I know that that was what uh, we would all have to experience during this year. Uh, but nonetheless, we have, uh, you know, 2020, when we think about that, uh, we think about vision. And the meaning of 2020 vision simply means that it's the normal visual acuity or clarity and sharpness of vision that's measured at a distance of 20 feet. So in other words, you can see clearly at 20 feet what would or should normally be visible at that distance. That's what 2020 vision means. I can see clearly now. I would suppose that this year, 2020, has taken on a new meaning for many of us. Um, I know it has for me. Uh, had someone told me that we would start this year with a virus known as COVID-19 that would cross the Pacific Ocean and land in America, I would have said to you, you must be crazy. Nobody saw that coming. If you'd have told me on January the 26th that the great basketball player and Los Angeles Laker, Kobe Bryant, would tragically die in a helicopter accident along with his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, I would have said, you must be crazy. That can't happen. You know, sometimes you see people like that and you say, man, those folks are going to live a long time. But at 41 years old and at 13 years old, you know, they lost their lives. And as we have progressed throughout this year, we found out in March that the stock market would crash as the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost over 2,000 points. And to add insult to injury, schools all over the country and the world would close along with businesses as we brace for the onslaught of an enemy that we could not see in the coronavirus. Police-involved killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and others have led to the Black Lives Matter movement and protests all over the country through June, July, and August. Both peaceful and violent protests led to demonstrations and riots all across the world where people were demanding the end to police brutality and racial injustice. In Beirut, Lebanon, an accidental detonation of over 2,700 tons of ammonium nitrate, stuff that's used to make bombs, would lead to the deaths of almost 200 people and injure thousands others. Black Panther actor, a guy that nobody saw, even knew that he was sick, lost his battle with colon cancer at the age of 43. In November, we found ourselves saying goodbye to Alex Trebek, the host of Jeopardy for over 36 years, who lost his battle to stage four pancreatic cancer. And even in this month of December, it seemed the rollout, but the uncertainty around a COVID-19 vaccine that was developed in just a few short months. Meanwhile, there are no reports of vaccines or cures for long-standing illnesses like the common cold or diabetes or cancer. I share all of this with you to tell you that we should be able to see more clearly right now. And what we should be seeing is that the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is imminent. He is coming back. Jesus is on his way back. The Bible declares in that eighth chapter that these are the beginning of sorrows. And it would behoove everyone under the sound of my voice to make your calling and election sure. Because Jesus is coming back. 
The Lord is allowing us to witness these events as a warning and as a call to salvation. The Bible declares in Hebrews chapter three and verse 15, it says today, if you will hear the Lord's voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. All throughout this year, in the midst of all that we have been experiencing, Jesus has been tugging at our hearts and at our minds, telling us that it's time for us to give our lives completely and devotedly to him. Amen. In other words, there are no more time for playing games. There's no more being a Sunday Christian and a Monday through Saturday sinner. There's no more ducking and dodging, hoping that you don't get caught for doing something that you know is wrong to do. There's no more time for you to play around with God. Because the truth is that if God gives you one chance or if he gives you a thousand chances, his word stands true that he would for none to perish, but he would, would that all would come to repentance. I want to submit to you tonight, beloved, that Jesus is standing at the door and he is knocking. And it doesn't matter who's beside you, who's around you. It doesn't matter what friends may come or go. But all you have to do is recognize that Jesus has been good to you. And if you realize that Jesus has been good to you, then you are to make a dedication in your heart and in your mind on tonight. Jesus, I'm done playing games. I'm going to either live for you or I'm going to be lost. And that is the simple decision that has to be made. Yes, I can see clearly now. Jesus is allowing us to see all of these things. The truth of the matter is God has gotten us to the edge of a brand new year. We're about 20 minutes away from 2021. There were millions that have not made it to this point. But here we are in this virtual, virtual watch meeting service with the opportunity to tell God, thank you for all that he has done, all that he has allowed us to get through in 2020. We have an opportunity tonight to give God praise. And it does not matter that we're not in a sanctuary, but I have found out that wherever I am, that is where the church is, and I can praise God no matter where I am. So you have an opportunity, if you're under the sound of my voice even now, you have the opportunity to let God know how serious you are about him. Because the truth of the matter is, you could have been a headline like so many others in 2020. But God has blessed you to still have breath in your body. Amen. And he has spared your life. And since you have breath in your body, you might as well tell him thank you because it could have been the other way. You're able to be a part of this virtual watch night service. When so many others are cooling in the cemetery right now, you ought to tell God thank you for what you have done for me and allowing me to be here right now. Right now. You still have people around you who love you, who care about you, who are praying for you. You ought to tell God, thank you for allowing me, those people to be a part of my life. And in my closing, I want to encourage everyone under the sound of my voice tonight to see what the Lord Jesus Christ has been trying to show us all throughout this year. That in spite of all of this mess that we have had to endure and are continuing to endure, that we still serve a good God. We still serve an awesome God. We still serve a God who is able to bring down every high place that will try to exalt itself against his glory. We serve a God who will sit high and who looks low. And there is nobody, nobody that's insignificant in the eyes of God. Your soul matters. Your soul matters. Jesus died for you, for me, and for everybody that's on this call and all of those who are watching through Facebook Live. Jesus died for every one of us. Why don't you give him a chance and see clearly? God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is my prayer.
I'll turn it over to Bishop Fowler. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. That word was rich. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Tomb. 
Now, the second verse, the next day, the one after preparing the body, the chief priests and the crowds of them to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while you were still alive, that the Caesar said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, the disciples had come and steal the body and tell the people that he had been, had been risen from the dead. The last petition was worse than the first. Take the God. Pilate asked, go make the tomb as secure as you, you can know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and post this guard. Now, today, we can truly say the tomb, the tomb is empty. Amen. Now, why was Pilate so insistent on guarding the tomb? If he didn't believe he was the Christ, he didn't believe he would rise again. Who could move that huge stone away? It was so huge that it was impossible for most anyone to move that stone. It was secure. They had guards there. But the tomb is empty. The tomb was empty when Christ came out of the tomb. And he never went back into the tomb. The empty tomb containing nothing, not filled or occupied by anything that remained. Nothing was left there. All they were left was a napkin, the straw that was around his head that was left over the evening. God doesn't have any soul that will be lost. Amen. If you're saved today, you're not going to be lost. If you're not saved, you will be lost. Amen. Jesus died that you should and would not die a second death. That's right. I praise God that knowing a few years ago, and I understood that I need to be saved. Someone tonight are walking on that same road and not saved. Baptized when I was 12. In a pond, a muddy pond. That didn't save me. I still was living an ungodly life. Even for a young person. Had no God in my heart nor my mind. Had no reason to serve God. My Lord. Had no pleasure in serving God. See, if you be honest, say, we all sinners saved by grace. We're fallen creatures. But blessed be the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That gave us eternal life. I and I cherish my walk with God I every day. Your video I'm gonna sit I cherish my okay. uh, faults and my failures. I cherish the mistakes I've made. I cherish the shortcomings because these were stepping stones to get me out of my situation. Somebody tonight are holding on to past experiences, past hurts, past misunderstandings. Right. But God, thank the God, will see about you, no matter how long you get. Just, just mute it. The prodigal son, my favorite so scripture, is the prodigal son. And the Bible says he went to his father and he wanted his possession. He wanted his inheritance. He wanted all that he uh, was due him. Yet still, he, he got, his father was not uh, holding back. His father gave him what he asked for. Because Father knew deep in his heart it would be a short period of time before he would return. A lot of us have left God. But the Lord knows it is a short period of time that we're going back to our Savior. Now, praise God, I would like to pray for something out in the world. But went, and, and went to a place that should have been. And went to a place where we fall among thieves and robbers. And he lost all that he had. And he found himself eating swine in a pig right. pen. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been in a pig pen, it's not a pretty place. It's not a good smelling place. It's a place that you wouldn't want to be around much longer, no more than dump the slop, we call it for the pig, and move out. 
for me, I was just eight years ago, and we had to carry all molded food, put water in it, and that's what they fed the pigs with, with the, all the things that were thrown away. And that's the way life is. The devil will use you, and you're stinking, and you're lost, and you just push you aside. But God doesn't care how low you get. He's there to bring you back to salvation. Amen. This man went to Pilate after the body. Jesus' customary, the body of crucified criminals, was left on the cross to rot or be eaten by wild animals. But the Jews wanted no such horrible display during the Passover season. And Rome, the Romans were known to grant the cover the, the body of the executed man to a friend or relative for proper burial. But the but the, the they were so the Jews were so angry they would want his body to hang on that cross and to be eaten because they say he was a criminal. He was a Belzebub. He was a chief of demons, of devils. Let him rot <clears throat> And let the birds eat him on the cross. But God. <coughs> but God. Amen. I think my David said, I know my Lord but I see my whole my soul in hell. That's right. But God delivered David out of that horrible place. God will deliver you tonight. Mm. And the Bible says, even when they wrap him in swallowed clothes and put him in a bar tomb, it just for a little while. He borrowed it. He didn't own it, and he wasn't going to stay there. Remember, he borrowed it. I mean, you return it back. You borrowed something, you return it back to the original owner. Right? So, he was only borrowed. He didn't plan to stay here. We are saints of God. We don't plan Sorry. to stay here. No, don't have we plan to move to a better place. We are just children oh, straight of passing through oh, Lord, this I'm land. And I pray to God tonight, know that later in the new tomb, he came into the world from a virgin woman, a virgin womb. He came forth again from a virgin tomb. He came from a virgin woman to a virgin tomb that nobody had ever been set in that tomb. So that when his body came forth and the tomb was empty, there was no possible confusion as to which body came forth. So it was no mistake that Jesus went in and he came out. Amen. He came out to live forever in our hearts. Amen. And thank God for the salvation today. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. And I'm filled with this precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because he delivered me out of my empty tomb. I was a dead man. Had no life, had no purpose. But thank God for the salvation and the preaching of the gospel. Thank God for the preached word. Some people are going to put the on the preached word, but I do. The most valuable thing you have in this universe is a pastor, a preacher, somebody to preach your soul out of sin. Money cannot save you. Mom and dad can do it, but the gospel of Jesus Christ will save you. And cause you to live an eternal life in glory. You too. There is no remain as it is the dead. No too. He rolled a large stone against the door of his tomb. This was customary where he was sealing a expensive tomb. A rich man like Joseph of Arabia probably had his tomb carved into the solid rock. His tomb was in a garden near the place of crucifixion in John 19 and 41. The tomb would probably have a small entrance, perhaps one or more compartments where bodies were laid out after being somewhat mummified with spices, ointment, and linen fit right around. Customers of Jews left the body alone for three years until they came down to the bone. Then the body was placed in a small stone box. No, a small box that they put the body in. Like we today, we get urns for someone that's a few years. 
That's kind of small when that body had to be up. But Jesus was was delivered before any bone that was broken. Blood of the water came out of But now a bone was broken in his body. And the Bible said when he rose, I'm about to rule, got two minutes. When he rose from the grave, it was like he was never touched. His body was like he never had a mark. And he was beaten all night long. That's what I'm saying about the Lord. What you go through on earth, when you get the glory, it's not like you've been to anything. Try to give God a praise. Like you never had any problems. Their right now, we, we get ready to go uh, into prayer. Oh, we get ready to finish. Uh, thank you for being on this Zoom. Thank you. It's one of the put it together. I feel it, it has been okay. uh, a caring. Right. I'm turning the camera on. And it's something that we will want to get used to. Because uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some time. It's going to be some good. good. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be some bad time. So we got to thank God for a great and a good time. As we really go on our knees in prayer, we got one minute. Let us go down right now in prayer, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, bless this world. Bless the confusion. Bring some civility to mankind. Lord God, when you got a hundred and some homeless people up in the house trying to change things that maybe the people voted for, you got people trying to call South Hill to stop your body from going in. We have never faced anything like this, but one or twice in the history of this country. What is going on? The devil is busy. And we come against the adversary right now. We come against the one that's that misplaced over 500 shots that should have went to people. And, 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 and it looks so like people are doing mean and crazy things. People need food, they need shelter. They need more than $600. And Lord God, I pray right now that it, that it will be released in the hands of people that need it. If things of God can release the border walls and, and protection of the country, surely that people could, can get another $1,400 to help them through this crisis. And Lord, I thank you right now. You got power to release, you got power to control. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank God for a brand new year you, that we're in 2021. Thank, thank God right now. In the name of Jesus, we praise it right now. Father God, we thank you. Let's turn the Lord God. Thank you yes, for a building, Lord, a place of worship. Thank you for the people that preach to you, great men and women of God, great elders and ministers, Lord God. We thank you for great missionaries and deacons and trustees. We thank God for the ushers and one that stands at the door, security people, Lord God, the, the, the video people, Lord God, that's making things happen at Smyrna. We thank God for Mother Miller, the God that down in Kinsley, Lord, and you're protecting her, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. And keep this willing to protect the Lord God. Oh, God, protect us as we go forth in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thank you for a new year. Thank you, God. Happy New Year. Uh, happy, new, happy New Year. 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 We made it. Praise the Lord. 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 Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We greet all the saints. Dr. Miller, Brother Tracy, and uh, Zoe, getting this together. Who would have just had a supernatural blessing? The devil couldn't stop us. He still got on. Amen. He still was successful. Dr. Miller, you, you have the last word? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to God just for everybody for this being our first virtual watch night service. And I, I'm just thankful for for everybody who's able to be a part of it. I mean, this is this has been a blessing to me. Uh, certainly thankful to uh, Sister Miller and to Brother Frankie. 
uh, for their efforts and, and helping us to get this together. And uh, certainly, uh, last but certainly not least, to, to Bishop Fowler and Lady Fowler for their continued support. Um, um, and as a, a point of personal privilege, Mama, I love you. Happy New Year. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad that my mother's on this service with us on tonight. Amen. Down in Kinston. And, and just praise Hallelujah. God for all of you. Just praise thank God for you, all of you. Hallelujah. I just thank, thank God for you. all of you. Amen. You, so continue to, uh, to keep you. us in your prayer. Amen. And let's have a great 2021. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. But say this will con conclude our, our our watch meeting service. Uh, if you if you uh, would like to uh, stay on just for a few more minutes. Praise the Lord, Saint. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. I know got to say. Tell them how many minutes you got yeah, to stop Facebook Live. Things to do. Can you hear me? We, we can hear you. We got Praise about. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Praise the Lord, Dr. Miller. Praise the Lord, Saints of Smyrna Church. Praise God. It's a blessing to have been able to be with you tonight. I praise God for it. I thank God for the rich word that I've heard on tonight. And I tell you, most of all, I thank God. God for salvation. Yes, I praise him and Amen. he's allowed me to come into 2021. Amen. And I'm looking forward to great things in this year. Praise God. One scripture, and we know, Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for good. Not going to finish it all out, praise God, but even those things that we feel like, oh, we can't see the good. It's good because it brings us to our knees. It's good because it causes us to meditate and thank God for his blessing. Yes. I desire your prayers that you continue to remember me in prayer as we remember one another. God bless you. Happy New Year. All right. God bless you, saints. Uh, please, um, please enjoy the new year and make sure you get all your... All your greens and, and, and black eyed peas and, and everything else that that, that you got to get. And uh, and please remember service on Sunday at 11 a.m. Um, at Smyrna Church. So, Lord willing, we will see you uh, on Sunday at the church. Uh, and if by chance the Lord should come between now and then, then we'll see you on the other side with Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We love you. May we all be blessed. All right. We're going to end the call now.